Well, you woke up, boys and girls, and you got that call. This is another edition of a Snow Day lesson. And we're back. Today, since it's snowing outside, I thought it would be great to start off with reading one of my favorite stories called The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. Let's read The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. After breakfast, he put on his snowsuit and ran outside. The snow was piled up very high along the street to make a path for walking. Crunch, 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 his feet sank into the snow. He walked with his toes pointing out like this, and he walked with his toes pointing in like that. Then he dragged his feet slowly to make tracks found something sticking out of the snow that made a new track. It was a stick. A stick that was just right for smacking a snow-covered tree. Down fell the snow, plop, on top of Peter's head. He thought it would be fun to join the big boys in their snowball fight, but he knew he wasn't old enough. Not yet. So he made a smiling snowman. And he made angels. And he pretended he was a mountain climber. He climbed up a great, big, tall, heaping mountain of snow. And slid all the way down. He picked up a handful of snow, and another, and still another. He packed it round and firm, and put the snowball in his pocket for tomorrow. Then he went into his warm house. He told his mother all about his adventures while she took off his wet socks. And he thought and thought and thought about them. Before he got into bed, he looked in his pocket. His pocket was empty. The snowball wasn't there. He felt very sad. While he slept, he dreamed that the sun had melted all the snow away. But when he woke up, his dream was gone. The snow was still everywhere. New snow was falling. After breakfast, he called to his friend from across the hall, and they went out together into the deep, deep snow. I hope you enjoyed that story. That's one of my favorites, especially on a snowy day. Lots of ideas and fun things to do. Uh, today, now what we're going to do is get started on our science experiment. But first, let's learn what scientists do. The first thing a scientist will do is ask a question. So you're wondering, what will happen if I do something? And later on, we're going to learn what our question is going to be, referring to our snowman that we will build. The next thing a scientist will do is they form a hypothesis. Fancy word. A hypothesis is a prediction. It's a guess. What do you think is going to happen? So we will form a hypothesis. Next, a scientist will test their hypothesis. So you have to test out what your question was. So refer back to your beginning, your question. After you test your hypothesis, or during your testing of the hypothesis, you're going to record your observations. So use your eyes. Look and see what's happening. Record those observations. And that's what good scientists will do. They need to remember what they saw. And what a better way than to record it. And finally, a scientist will come to a conclusion. Scientists need to come find an answer, going back to what their question was in the beginning. 
So hopefully by the end of the science experiment, you will have a conclusion or an answer to your science experiment. There you have the steps to do a science experiment. Now let's actually start our science experiment. Don't worry, I'll be helping you step by step along the way using those steps we just learned about. This science experiment is kind of fun too. Let's first talk about what you will need. First, you need a small tray or baking pan. It doesn't have to be terribly big, but it does need to have sides. Two, you need snow. So yes, go get your gloves and hats on because I need you to go outside for a few minutes. Here's what I want you to do. Go outside and make three snowballs. They shouldn't be too big, about the size of a baseball or a softball. Then I want you to stack them just like you would if you were making a snowman. That's what you are doing. You're going to make a mini snowman. If you'd like to get some small twigs or other small items for a face, you go right ahead and do that. Once you've made your snowman, put it in the middle of your tray. Then bring your snowman inside and we are going to go through all of our steps. Okay, did you build your snowman? I hope so. Okay, now it's our turn to be scientists now with that snowman. We had our fun building it, but now let's, let's do some work as scientists. The first thing we need to do is, remember, ask a question. Okay, so our question for our experiment is going to be, what will happen when your snowman stays inside for a period of time? Okay, we know we usually build a snowman outside, and we know that it can last for a pretty long time outside in the winter time. But if we bring it inside our nice warm houses, something different might happen. So that's what we're going to find out. That's our question for today. Okay, now, next step remember we want to actually we want to observe first what we see so this is a good time to take a piece of paper and write down some of the properties that you see this word properties here okay, that means what what does it look like what types of words could you describe to could you use to describe your snowman so we're going to list our properties and draw what the snowman looked like at the beginning so on a piece of paper, that's exactly what you're going to do. So if I'm looking at my snowman, I would see that I have my head, and my other two snowballs, and it's sitting inside my container. Okay, maybe whatever kind of pieces you added onto your snowman, maybe you gave him a little hat. Okay, so we have your snowman sitting inside the container right now. And I'm going to write down some of those properties that we talked about, words that would describe that snowman, how it looks. So right now I see three round snowballs. Okay. And let's see, they are frozen maybe or solid frozen or solid snowballs. There are sticks for arms. Okay. And inside my container, right now it's empty. There's nothing in there. That's important sometimes when something is empty because maybe that might change later. So those are some of the properties that I see right now. Okay, so you list your properties also. Okay. All right, next, we are going to make a prediction. Okay, this is that fancy word, hypothesis, that we saw before. Hypothesis, a prediction. This is when we ask ourselves, I think this might happen. Okay, we're making a guess right now. Okay, so I'm just going to take a guess right now. My snowman, after one hour, have your parents help you if you're not sure how long an hour might be. But after one hour, what do you think that that snowman's going to look like? Since we just started our experiment, our snowman is still a pretty good looking snowman. But what might happen after an hour? 
So I'm going to write down or draw some of those properties. Maybe it will change. So from what I know, sometimes we base, or many times we base our hypothesis on what we already know. And I know that when I have maybe an ice cube sitting inside, I know that that ice cube starts to melt. So I'm wondering that maybe my, if my snowman might start to melt as well. So I think after one hour, that could be a pretty long time. Maybe, uh, maybe that's as long as maybe a movie that you may have watched. So maybe after an hour, I might start to see my snowman getting a little bit droopy, maybe. But I think he still might look like a pretty good snowman. Okay, and there's my container I have him sitting in again. Okay, his hat might still be there. Okay, and then we want to wait a little bit longer throughout the day because you're on a snow day. So you pretty much have all day to take for this experiment today. So maybe you want to go outside and play a little bit more. And then four hours later, that might be around, depending on what time you start it today, maybe around dinner time. Maybe check your snowman and write down some more of your observations. What properties do you see? Think of some of those good describing words that you could use to describe your snowman. And then before you go to bed tonight, check your snowman and see, do you see any changes that have happened? Maybe, okay. So in each of those spots on your paper, that would be a good time to draw what you saw. Maybe you have a camera. Your parents maybe can help you take some pictures even. That's a good way that scientists could record their observations as well by taking actual photographs. Okay? So we could add words in there. Any way that you feel would be a good way to record what you saw. Okay? So this is going to take over the course of a whole day. This is not just a quick experiment. This we have to keep coming back and checking. We wouldn't want to sit there all day just staring at the snowman because that might get a little boring. And it's a snow day. You want to have a great time today. So keep coming back and checking on your snowman throughout the day. Okay? All right. All right. Now, as we're going through our experiment now, we, of course, need to now record those results. And that is a lot like what we just did. Okay? So the first, well, that was our predictions that we were making, actually. So I kind of mixed that up a little bit. So those were our predictions. So now this is the part where we actually want to record exactly what happened. Okay? So we are recording our exact results on this page. Okay? And then finally, at the end, we need to draw a conclusion. Okay, remember, the conclusion is the answer to the question that we started with in the beginning. This is what you discovered. What did you discover after doing your science experiment? So here's a sentence that you might use to help you come to your conclusion or your answer. So what I wrote was, if you put a snowman inside for blank hours, this might be, maybe you want to talk about for four hours or for eight hours or 12 hours, however long you conduct it, your experiment. So if you put a snowman inside for a certain number of hours, it will, hmm, what happened? I won't give it away. You'll experience that for yourself. But fill in the word, what will happen because, why did it happen? So see if you can come up with a conclusion and discover what happened to your snowman and why. Okay, thank you boys and girls. And I hope that you have a great time with your science experiment and have fun being a scientist. I'm ready to go outside and play today. And I hope that you will have a great time on your snow day, just like I'm about to also. Thank you, boys and girls, and I'll see you another time.